Let's talk football now. The party continues in Ivory Coast after last night's fairy tale win over the Super Eagles of Nigeria in the final of the Africa Cup of Nations. The Ivory Coast national team recovered from a painful 4 0 defeat in the group stages to win the tournament after they sacked their first coach and handed over the team to caretaker Emas Faye. Last night's game crowned a tournament of surprises with so many of the continent's biggest teams exit in the initial stages. The BBC's Ian Williams has been following the victory parade in Abidjan. These Ivory Coast players are, of course, now national heroes after last night's 2-1 victory over Nigeria in the final. It means the Elephants have now won three Nations Cup titles. They're the first host to win on home soil since 2006. Now, of course, that has made a lot of people in this country very, very happy. Today we are happy. We get together and the, people, the country is changing. So we, we thank, we thank, thank to our president. MSV is hero of Cote d'Ivoire. We are so proud to celebrate our hero. Viva MS! I live in Denver and I decided to come here for the finals. Now I'm really excited I'm here because that's the best decision of my life. The tournament was very difficult, but after where our uh, uh, players uh, uh, played very well and today we are very happy. We have to, to, to do uh, some parties. It's obligatory, obligatory. Ivory Coast has spent over a billion dollars on hosting, yes on new stadiums, but other infrastructure projects as well, such as roads, hospitals, things like that. People question whether it was worth it, but for a country that was torn apart by civil war in the first part of this century, perhaps another great example of the way that sport and football in particular can really bring uh, a nation and a people together. And we can now turn our attention to our guests. We are joined by Gabriel Zakwani, who captained the Democratic Republic of Congo national team and is now assistant manager of the country's under-20 team. And John Boafo, a sports and marketing expert living in Abidjan. Uh, John, uh, both of you, of course, thank you for making time to join us. I'll start with you, John. Talk to us about the atmosphere in Abidjan at the moment and what yesterday, yesterday's victory meant for the country. Yeah, the atmosphere over here is really electric. It started yesterday, um, just before the game. Most people ended up taking buses that were arranged by the uh, Federation to go to the stadium. And from the buses to inside of the stadium, people were really excited. It was like they expected this this win and uh, they got it in the end. So people are really excited and hopefully that, that, that good feeling continues to, to go on in this country. I mean, there are plenty of talking points from this tournament. For example, Gabriel, your team made it to the semifinals at DRC. Uh, a year for the underdog is what some are calling it. How, what, what would you describe this tournament as? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just think it was a tournament full of surprises. Um, there were so many shocks. No one was guaranteed to win any games. And even the way Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, ended up winning the tournament is a circumstance we've never seen. So I think it was just a year of surprises, shocks, and the uncertainty. Uh, it wasn't guaranteed for anyone. So I think it, it made it very entertaining for us viewers. Um, but I think being involved in such a tournament was very special this year. I mean, John, I want to read you some stats here. AFCON was broadcast in 173 territories globally, most watched tournament in the history of the competition, with the CAF president saying that it attracted 2 billion views overall. What do you think made the difference this time round? I think that um, Ivory Coast is known as the country of hospitality and the hospitality and the, the welcoming heart that, of Ivorians is something that was felt and probably transmitted to the millions or even the billions of people who ended up watching this tournament. And there's another fact that there was close to three goals per, per match in throughout this um, tournament. And that made it really exciting. We didn't know who was going to win. The smaller teams were able to perform well, and the bigger teams, like you mentioned earlier, were also um, they were out of this of, of the tournament quite early. So it made it really exciting uh, Afcon, and arguably the best Afcon ever. Okay, I want to hear from both of you on this one, but I'll start with you, Gabriel. Where does African football then go from here? And of course, what next for CAF? I think the aim for CAF now is to keep um, 
putting money into African football. Now we see the potential, we see the viewers, and now we see that it goes all over the world. So I think just following on from what Morocco did at the World Cup, the aim is now for an African uh, side to challenge on winning the World Cup and taking it at a global stage. We've seen the entertainment it brings in Africa, but now it's time to take it to that extra step, which is the World Cup. And John, what, what would you say? What happens next for African football after this? I think the, 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 there needs to be an emphasis that's already the case on, on probably on, on female football because that's something that they're trying to, to push on and, and move forward. And I think that at the end of the day, the, the African teams are will be capable of winning the World Cup, but it's probably a female team that's going to win the, fem the, the World Cup before a male team. So a focus on that and the focus on the commercial side, getting more, more and more partners to, to be able to grow the game on the continent is something that's very key. I mean, this may be a difficult question to answer, but, uh, you know, scoring 100% when you're hosting a tournament of this nature is, is practically impossible. If there's anything that can be improved in future AFCONs, whether it be Morocco in 2025 or the East African bid of 2027, and Gabriel, I'll start with you, what would you like to see uh, in terms of those future tournaments? No, I think it's, just, it's that you can't really top a tournament like this one. This one was the blueprint now. Now... <laughs> people expect it so you have to look at this sort of tournament and to top it is going to be very difficult <laughs> in terms of entertainment in terms of goals but I think if that infrastructure maybe more stadiums uh, to infrastructure and spread the games out a little bit more because I think we don't have too many stadiums where we can facilitate all the teams but I think the only thing is about infrastructure for me I think in terms of uh, entertainment it was perfect John, how do we ensure that the rest of the world is paying attention to what's happening in African football and that players will get opportunities to play in other parts of the world by virtue of their performance at the next AFCON Games? I think that this, like like you guys said earlier, this AFCON really showed that AFCON in general is an entertaining tournament and that it's something that needs to be watched by everywhere, everyone around the world. It seems like uh, that the that the seasons keep going on in, in Europe and a lot of people didn't have that eye on AFCON, but uh, this AFCON finished with a bang and hopefully people will be you know, more attentive to the next AFCONs and uh, give the opportunities to some of the biggest players to, to be able to, to make okay. it big on the world stage. Let me say thank you to the both of you. That was John Boafo, a sports and marketing ex expert living in Abidjan, still celebrating that victory yesterday, and Gabriel Zakwani, uh, formerly of the Democratic uh, DRC national team. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Wahiga Mwaura. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.